Last week, Triumph announced their entry into the affordable middleweight market with the awesome looking 660cc triple cylinder Trident and I speculated as to whether it can take the crown of the king of the segment, the MT-07. And it's a tough bike to beat, offering snappy performance at a price that other manufacturers will struggle to match. In fact, Yamaha say that they've sold over 125,000 of them in Europe since its first iteration, making it the most popular naked bike since 2014, with over twice as many sold as the nearest rival. But I reckon the Trident looks pretty good and certainly outdoes the MT in some departments like the suspension, electronics and for peak power, but a few of you are quick to point out that the MT is a few years old and due an update. Fortunately, hot on the heels of the new MT-09, we now have full details of the 2021 MT-07 with a bunch of changes to both the looks and the performance. But did they go far enough? It's not a comprehensive redesign, more of an incremental evolution. So in today's video, we'll look through the updates and new specs and find out whether it can hold its position as a bestseller, fending off the likes of the Trident, the updated Z650 and the updated CB650. 50R. But before we get started, if you're new here and you want to see more of the latest new motorcycles for 2021, then please do remember to hit subscribe. There are loads of announcements at this time of year, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see those videos as soon as they go live. First up, the MT-07 has received a bit of a facelift for the next model year. The most notable update is the headlight assembly, which has been brought in line with the other bikes in the MT family, like the MT-09 and the MT-03. Yamaha describe it as a Y-shaped icon with minimal overhang to keep the bike looking light and aggressive. This front-end aesthetic certainly split opinion in the comments of my video about the MT-09 and I'd expect this take to be the same. Some people seem to love the super modern approach that pushes motorcycle design forward, whilst others really don't like the shape or height of the single LED projector. But personally, I think this headlight flows with the shape of the tank better than the MT-09s. Of course, it's not for the rider who likes their traditional motorcycle shapes, but for them, there's always the XSR700, which is the same bike in a retro skin. The MT, in my opinion, should be super modern, and they've definitely achieved that. New bodywork also helps, and they've used the same mass centralized design ethos as the MT-09, which aims to position the tank, radiator, and seat close to the engine to give a sense of power and torque. The air intake surrounds have been redesigned as have the plastic tank covers with a chunky midsection that Yamaha says gives contrast to the slim seat to give the rider a sense of freedom of movement. There are some other minor changes to the color and finish of the fork covers, foot pegs, engine stays and engine covers. The brake and clutch levers are now black and the wiring in the cockpit has been neatened up, rounding off a nice visual tweak for the MT-07. Three colors will be available for 2021, starting with Icon Blue, which features a blue tank, blue wheels, and some silver accents on the seat unit and headlight cowl. A tech black version is unsurprisingly black, with just the exhaust system deviating from the scheme with some aluminium guards. But my pick of the bunch is Storm Fluo, with a grey finish on the tank and headlight shroud, fluorescent red wheels, and a bit of red and turquoise detail on the air intakes. I think this paint job suits the new super modern front end the best. Speaking of the headlight redesign, the internals are updated of course, with a single central LED projector responsible for both high and low beams. Yamaha claimed that it produces a powerful beam with well-defined edges. Daytime running lights are also LED, forming that Y-shaped face, and indicators front and rear are now also LEDs, which contribute to a more up-to-date look. Elsewhere in the electronics department, the dash has been improved with a new inverted LCD display, flipping the previous generation's black readouts on a white background for a black background with white characters. It'll be interesting to see how this fares on the road as Honda used a similar dash on their CB naked bikes and have had to tweak the angle for 2021 in order to reduce glare in bright conditions that can make them difficult to see. Perhaps Yamaha will get it right from the off by learning from Honda's mistake. They've increased the size of the clock, gear indicator, trip meters and tachometer to improve readability. They've introduced spot color accents for key displays and revised the switch on the bars for easier operation of the dash. 
I'd say that this looks like a pretty modest advancement, given that TFT displays are becoming increasingly common at all price points. Kawasaki's Z650 is a good example of a bike costing almost exactly the same as the MT, yet being updated with a full colour dash already a year ago. It also has some phone connectivity, and the upcoming Triumph Trident will offer a Bluetooth module accessory to open up navigation prompts, phone calls and messaging, media controls, and even the ability to control a GoPro. Yes, the Trident is a touch more expensive and you add even more cash for the Bluetooth accessory, but it'll be interesting to see if that extra functionality will be enough to tempt buyers in this affordable naked market to spend that little bit extra on the Triumph. I'd certainly value the navigation feature as I prefer to keep my phone tucked away safely in my pocket and avoid using up the battery. Yamaha have sought to improve comfort from an ergonomic perspective though, with new tapered bars which are 32mm wider than the previous generation in order to tweak the riding position as well as offer more leverage during low speed manoeuvres. They say that they ran extensive tests with riders of a variety of physiques in order to come up with a position that was comfortable for the widest possible range of builds. From a performance perspective there have been a couple of increments too, starting with the brakes. They were all already pretty well specced with a pair of own brand 4-pot calipers at the front, but this size has been increased for 2021 from 282mm to 298 This ought to give a bit more power and feel, and Yamaha claim no increase in weight. New updated tyres should also improve stopping and handling, with the MT-07 now shod with Michelin's Road 5 models, a 180x55 at the rear and a 120x70 at the front. For reference, the pre previous generation used Bridgestone's Battleaxe BTO23s, but with the Michelin's Yamaha claim an improvement in grip and handling in both wet and dry conditions. And lastly, the engine gets an update too, with stricter emissions regulations due at the beginning of 2021, courtesy of Euro 5. A revised exhaust system, new ECU, optimised fuel injector settings and redesigned air intake ducts all help to clean up the 690cc parallel twin at the sacrifice of about one newton meter of peak torque and one horsepower of peak power. But that's a tiny change which will barely be perceptible and it'll still be the torquiest bike in its market by a decent stretch. Yamaha also say that the torque response is now smoother and more linear which ought to make it even more accessible to ride. Whether all these changes are truly up to scratch really depends on the price, but unfortunately, according to Yamaha UK's Twitter account, we won't find out until January with bikes in dealers for March. On the one hand, I can't imagine they'll hike the price massively for the sake of a new headlight, bodywork and some bigger discs, but on the other, it seems like the price will go up to some extent, otherwise they would have probably just announced the price up front. Hopefully Yamaha can keep it competitive, because although the bike certainly looks more up to date and some of the changes will make it a better bike to ride, it feels like it's lacking some key features like traction control or upside down forks that are pretty common elsewhere in the market. What do you guys think? Have Yamaha done enough for 2021, or would you go with something else like the Trident or the CB650R? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.